started here. All right, let's uh, shouldn't take too long today. We did some demos and they did they did some activities. So So last time or the time before we talked about um, second law of thermodynamics and we talked about um, degrees of freedom. We talked about the arrow of time. And Sean Carroll is the one who's known for his arrow of time. And I think he's at Caltech. He maybe maybe Stanford, maybe he's, he goes back and forth. But he's one of the top 20, I think, thinkers alive today. And he's a physicist. So he's on Joe Rogan. He's been on Joe Rogan podcast. Um, it's on YouTube and stuff, Spotify. Um, and I was trying to find it on YouTube because I was going to show you guys, you know, we're, we're going to watch it, but just to show you where you can go. And I couldn't find the whole hour and whatever, it was two hours long. Uh, so I just, all, all that YouTube has now is probably something with contract and Rogan, you know, got a lot of money from Spotify. So they probably took all this stuff down from YouTube. But anyway, um, these are some of the, they have still bits and pieces of it on uh YouTube and I liked it on YouTube because uh, the engineer there he would bring up he would bring up the Wikipedia articles and bring up pictures and while they're talking it really helped especially with somebody like Sean Carroll uh, it helped understand it better but now I guess we're unless there's some kind of there's a Joe Rogan maybe there's a Joe Rogan experience app I don't know but but here he is talking about parallel universes and um, it's not here constantly blowing uh, Joe Rogan's mind. Um, so I bring it up because you ought to expand. Uh, I, you know, I, I think you are kind of thinkers anyway. So you ought to expand your knowledge a little bit and kill two birds with one stone. Watch this or watch any, anything like, like uh, Gibbon is a student I have who's really interested in rockets. And he's always let me know, hey, there's going to be a rocket launch today. And he watches all of them. And he studies it. And, um, and so I said, well, given why don't you just, for your notes, just write down a couple of pages worth of stuff on rocketry and thrust and things you're learning and, and just turn it in and get credit for it, right? Get some physics cred for this, all this. You're already thinking about physics. So I thought, well, there's an idea. I mean, Sean Carroll, if you like this idea of, of quantum and strings and and, and Carol can talk about a lot of subjects. Sometimes you can just find, used to, he had a whole course online uh, that I started watching. I didn't finish it, but two or three lectures into it. But if you want to like pick that out or like Alex in my first hour, he borrowed the DVDs uh, for string theory and he's watching that. So I said, well, Alex, just write up a page or two. And so you're getting credit for all this. I mean, the notes are a hundred points and they're due uh, you know, they're due on, uh, for you guys, I guess, Thursday next week. So people are asking, well, how are we going to take notes? We're virtual. Well, he doesn't, even the kids in class don't take that many notes, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll force them to pull out a piece of paper. Okay, now this should take up about a fourth of a page and let's do this graph and let's, you know, but some still don't do it and that's okay. Uh, you're going to pay the price. You're going to lose a hundred points if you don't do some kind of notes. So you can pick as long as it has to do with physics, I, it'd be nice if it was something we talked about like gravity or so. So then that you, then you can throw in your two cents worth uh, from, you know, little research you've done. Hey, I did research on Mars and on Mars, the gravity does this and on Mercury, the gravity does this and these are tidal effects. And so that's kind of cool because then you're actually doing what you're supposed to do anyway, right? Aren't we supposed to be learning? Uh, and maybe it, I, I Carlos is big into auto mechanics. So I said, Carlos, why don't you write up a page on internal combustion, you know, uh, pistons, things you got to know anyway. Uh, and so he's going to, I think he's going to do that. Rocker arms and, you know, top dead center and how it all works. You can go historically. So that's why I bring these in here. Uh, just some examples of, you know, there's all kinds of cool stuff on physics. And if you go on the Facebook group, you'll find, articles you'll find and I'll, I'll post articles i'll post videos and you can start posting videos and articles and you get facebook points for it 
So if you're looking for a score to kind of raise up to the A or to strengthen your A or your, go to a B, whatever you're trying to get to, maybe you're just trying to, to pass, I have students, I have students in all those phases. Um, you know, make something out of it. Um, a DJ is a welder. Well, maybe there's a lot of welding. There is a lot of physics with welding. So maybe you can look at art, you know, art weld and, and what's the different kind of welds and what's, what's the physics, physics wise going on. So enough of that. So you do have, it, it is due uh, next for you guys for virtual on Thursday for regular kids. No, both Wednesday for regular kids. Um, here's the packet to organizer. This is now on my front porch. It's a red piece of paper. All right. It's in the handouts box, but let's look at this. Uh, first off, make sure your name and the, in your case, you'd cir circle virtual goes on top. And then I'll fill this in. I'll fill in the notes. Uh, and if you have it like Miranda and, and a lot of you really good note takers, and so you put it in a notebook, you don't want to rip it out, then just set your packet inside the notebook like we did last time. You put your notebook in the box. If you don't want anybody to see it, you can put it in your slot. Because when I hand it back, it's graded. I'll put it in that slot, in your name slot. You know? So I'll fill this in out of 100 points. And by the way, you can get 120 points out of 100 points. You can get 20, you can get up to 20 points bonus if and you're just getting credits. You're getting credits, credits, credits. And I don't know, 30 credit, what probably 20, mm, no, 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 no. I'd say probably 15 credits is probably required on this one to get 100. Well, it's about on standard page, it's about three credits. I never told this to a class. I'll tell them Monday. The standard page is about three credits. So a standard, when I say standard, I should hold you up. I have standard pages um, in the, uh, I have examples of notes. I think on the Facebook, of course, those are really good examples, but I have your typical notes somewhere. I don't see it around, but you know, you write your page, not like three words a page, one big drawing, but your typical writing out page, that's about three credits, okay? You can get up to 10 credits on a page, depending on how thick it is, or just a half a credit per page. But let's say you get about 15 credits, that's probably 100 points. So that's five, just normally, you know, five sides, not five front and back, so five sides uh, of notes would probably give you your 100 points, if it has to do with physics. Now this stuff, you're gonna fill in yourself. This is a discussion class points, uh, but then again, we're not in class. So in you guys' case, it'll be your Zoom points. I know like Eric and people don't get, hey, it's a Zoom point, Sophia, people like that, you know, get, get Zoom points, Rose. All right, uh, Takaki, all you guys, are hopefully you've gotten at least one or two. And then Facebook points, you can still get those points. And Facebook points, because I'm gonna need some help this weekend. I'm busy weekend with my company. Got a lot going on this weekend. So I won't be able to spend the time I need sitting on Facebook and kind of helping people through their take home test. So if you're helping me, if you're helping me, you're helping them, you're helping yourself. So if they have every, every question on the take home test is, is singled out and there's comments section below each one of them. So maybe you have a great question and then you get a Facebook point just for asking a great question. Or maybe you're helping somebody and I didn't get to the question for, it took me like four hours and you got to them in 15 seconds, then you get to be the teacher, all right? And, and I reward you for helping me out. Like I'm paying you, I pay you in points, okay? So that goes right, Facebook points go right here, okay? All right, now as far as this goes, um, the keys, Look for the keys in the Facebook group. I'm no longer, I'm totally out of room. And for second semester, it's gonna make the blanket statement that I'm not gonna post keys on campus. Keys will be posted on the Facebook group. I'm tired of messing with this whole lack of space. Um, unless I find a smarter way. I know I put a lot of links. I mean, but, but you need screenshots, you know, you need screenshots on canvas. I need to do a survey and find out if people are actually looking at those. Is it even worth it? People are actually looking at the screenshots. I know people do watch these videos because I, I can look on YouTube and say, okay, 38 people watch this. Great. Um, 
but the, I don't know about the screenshots. So I may end up putting screenshots on Facebook as well. I don't know. You guys are free to comment uh, if you let me add the comments again. You maybe can hold up chat, chat, chat. Okay. You're free to comment ideas, thoughts. This is all a work in progress. Uh, what else we got? Make sure you check those boxes on the red sheet. It's red for you. Make sure you check these rows of boxes. This column, column really, this column of boxes is checked. When this column box is checked, it tells me the paper is included. This used to be a bigger deal. Now I staple these things together in sets, so it's not like you're gonna lose them that much. And this column though is important because this is whether you finish it or not. Now, some of these, I'll tell you right now, we're not gonna finish. Uh, uh, let's see, where was it? One of these, somebody pointed out that we didn't, here it is. On this two six, on this one, um, there is a little bit on the back on simple harmonic motion. We never got to that. That's okay. We'll get to it next semester. But, but that one, you if you check it, if not check it, I understand. We did what we're supposed to do in class. Uh, the other one that we are not going to finish, I promise you. I'm not saying we're not going to get to it. We'll do a little bit on it, but only I'm down to Monday, Tuesday now, and we still got a lot of stuff to cover. Oh uh, boy. So I, there's a chance we didn't even get to 216. But if we do get to it, there ain't no way we're gonna finish it. That's one of those like 212 or 211 takes forever to get to all the problems. So I, I already thought we were gonna have a hard time getting that one done. Um, so don't blow it off yet, but I, I guarantee we're not getting to the back. And then make sure that you put your take home test 2A, 2B in there. Uh, you, you you never really turn those in or you shouldn't have. Those, those should be submitted. So you should still have those. Uh, these are the take home tests. And then of course your notes go on the back or in a notebook. All right. Oh, and then um, now you would, you would ignore this if you're virtual. It says how many dolphins you all submitted it. You're supposed to have submitted it. Um, if you haven't submitted it, then do that now. Um, not both 211 and 212, just two, you're supposed to submit 212. Okay, uh, virtual submit, virtual submit on 212. Okay, question. And now keep in mind, this is how many point, points possible. This is how many points each one's worth. All right, so it looks like it ranges from six, uh, three, well, six points for a sheet all the way up to 18, um, 16, 20 points. You get 20 points for that one. Now, and then someone asked, well, wait a minute, why is uh, gold standard, which is really, was hard, why is it only worth eight points? I mean, the gold standard is only worth eight points because you already got points when you submitted it. So if you've already gotten points, then uh, I'm not gonna keep, you know, I'm not gonna make it worth 30. You've already gotten like 25 on it, so. Okay, you gotta be organized, all that kind of stuff. You get organization points. This is, this right here is 300 points. Any questions on the packet organizer? It's on my porch. It's also, oh, okay. It's on the cover sheet on the um, canvas. It's in the, uh, okay, hold on. It's in the uh, Facebook, but I, I don't think I have yet put a PDF for a good copy to print off if you want to make a PDF. Okay, ask you. Note to myself, hopefully I'll see this and make a PDF here as soon as we're done. And I'll put that in the PDF mold module two, I think, yeah, module two on the canvas is where all the PDFs are. Then you can print off a nice copy or just come to the porch. Okay, and I'm sure you're getting tired of coming to my porch. Next semester, I'll try and rethink everything. Oh. And last, okay, last night about 9.30, somebody drove by in this big old truck and came up to the porch and about freaked my wife out. I was upstairs and she was like, what? Someone's, you know, she, she knows you guys come to the porch, but at 9.30 at night, it's not, not a good, probably not a good time. And then at 4.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, there was a car out front of our house. And I thought, it, don't hand in stuff at 4.30 in the morning. 
And then I went out there and there was nothing handed in and nothing. So I guess it wasn't you guys, it was somebody else, but okay. Okay, so today what we worked on, and let's go back and look at lot yesterday. So I told you guys about Nullius and Verba and us going to the stadium and we're trying to prove for ourselves that G is 9.81, just not by word of mouth. So we can actually get proof of, of that. Um, and this is the work we did in here. And I said, we were gonna to get to this uh, sig fig stuff Friday. We started talking about it today in class, but now it's more like, now it'll be Monday. Thought about blowing it off, but it's, it has to do with accuracy and doing a lab and instruments and, okay. So today um, we, uh, okay, so we have our two Gs. We have the G from the, and the ones we're using are these crazy numbers from third hour where G is 6.25 meters per second squared, supposed to be 9.81. And outside it was 12.2. So like we are wildly, G is the same pretty much, give or take a uh, half a percent all over the world, you know? <laughs> and here we're having G double, like it's, like I, I weigh twice as much in the classroom as I do at the, all right, at the stadium than I do in the classroom. So obviously we're wrong. So it wasn't that we were trying to mess up. I mean, it's, it's really our values. And that's what, that's what we got talking about today. So um, we fill all that in. And then, okay, then I showed them this. So I said, okay, let's actually spend some money and let's find out what G is um, for real in the classroom. And so about 10 years ago, I wrote a grant. I used to write tons of grants and kind of stopped recently. But I wrote a grant for this equipment here. Now this is $800, it was 10 years ago. And that's for the stand, for the photo gates. There's a photo, these are photo gates. Um, for the timer, the timer, this timer, uh, it's not as bad now, but it's a really nice timer. It goes, notice it goes to the nearest uh, check, uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths of a second. So it's a it's hundred times more accurate than your, than your iPhone. So that's why it's expensive. Uh, the, the, this plus the timers are like 400, it's real expensive. Uh, and then the stand itself was extremely expensive. So it was around 800 bucks put all together. I got a few other things, but the whole package. So I said, okay, now we have something that is accurate. And um, all right. So what I did was, yeah, as a demonstration, uh, you put the ball, you put the ball up here, it's just a little, you know, a little, uh, class but class the ball up there and you hit let it go and so we then uh looked at with these photo gates once the ball crosses this first photo gate that starts the timer and once the ball crosses the second photo gate that ends the timer now you can set this timer on different modes and we'll talk about that more monday in class if maybe um but the mode i was looking at today just kind of set the bar was um, let's see what it says G is. So we use the second orange like we did dropping balls in the stadium and in the classroom. So let's use the same equation. So we use the second orange, really blue equation uh, because uh, I'll show you. We're, we're Monday, we'll probably introduce the blue equations, but blue equations are really simple. Okay, so this isn't quite orange, but Let's say we have the second orange. The second, the second orange is delta x equals v naught x t. Notice I'm adding out a subscript. Plus one half a sub x t squared. And then the blue is for the y direction in free fall. And so that the second blue is delta y equals v naught y t minus one half g T squared. Now we'll we'll talk about why the minus is uh, next week. But but in blue blue kinematics is and 
is a subset of orange. Everything's really a subset of orange. Blue will be, well, blue and green uh, will be. Okay, so not everything, but those two are subsets of orange. Uh, pink comes later, but those are for jerks. Those are for quartets, uh, more complicated motion. And, and the pink equations require calculus. So we'll get into those, uh, I don't know, sometime next semester. Anywho, so, so the blue and the, and the orange are pretty similar, but we use the blue equations. And once again, V naught, oh, this is a big assumption. So we made the assumption that V naught was zero or close to zero. And that's probably where we ran into issues. Because what I did was I put the photo gate, this photo gate, I put it as close as I could up here. So it's right below where it takes off. But the equation assumes that V naught Y is zero. But in reality, as the ball crosses that, it does have some velocity. So right there with this method, and there's other methods, but right there with this method, you already introduce guaranteed error, okay? Hopefully you're hoping that it's negligible, it's less than 5% and you still get good results. Okay. So we're making that, that's an assumption. That's a big assumption. Yes, it is zero when it's in the clasp, but once it breaks that plane, it's already moving and I'm saying it's zero. We know that things start to speed, it starts to drop fat slowly, things start to, when they first come out of the chute, they, you know, they don't come out as fast as they get faster as they go. So uh, anyway, that's probably a horrible assumption, but I want this to be more like what we did and just compare it apples to apples. Okay, so um, the delta y I found a time this guy is going to have four sig figs four sig figs. Because uh, it's going to go to the nearest, it goes zero point blank, 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 blank. It goes to the nearest 10 thousandths of a second. And each one of those, the tolerance on the machine is like plus or minus on that timer is like plus or minus point oh, 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 point oh, oh, oh three or something. So it's, so you're, you're only, you're only iffy in this last digit. So that's that gig, remember the first iffy is the last siggy. That gives you four siggies in time. That's a amazing luxury for us to have four significant figures in anything. Uh, the G we're trying to find. So when I solve this for G, I get uh, G equals, um, da, 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 plug this over here, put this over there. Well, the negatives that I'm looking at right now. So G equals negative two delta Y over T squared. Um, delta Y, notice that delta Y will be negative because it's falling below the origin. So you want uh, G, by the way, I didn't tell us in class, but G is always positive. It'll come up, believe me. But G itself is a magnitude, it's always positive. But I guarantee the delta Y is going to be negative because it's falling, right? So it's definitely, the delta Y is definitely negative. And then you have that negative there, which, which hard wires in and guarantees that G itself is positive. First year I taught physics, I didn't think that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I never learned that, I guess. Uh, it never really came up. Uh, you blow through kinematics kind of fast in uh in college which is a huge mistake because then kids who have not had physics are just totally lost and they're starting to then they start then they just get desperate start plugging numbers into equations that's not going to happen to you guys you'll have a super strong foundation in kinematics and we spent the whole daggone semester on it um so uh i don't know why they assume that you just know kinematics you don't anyway um so I blew through it and my head spinning half the time in physics in college. And so I didn't, when I was teaching physics, I just thought, well, G is negative, it's down. 
oh man, that went fine until we got to pulleys. Pulleys and machines, it was a disaster. So G itself is a magnitude, it is positive. You know, just saying that. I didn't say that in class. But. Uh, all right, so we put the first photo gate up there. We put the second photo gate, you know, somewhere up in here. It was about, it was about that much distance between them right there little bit less and so i measured i used a now i have calipers and all but the daggone botball kids have them somewhere i think they were using them they're over there in the botball section so i just had to use a ruler so that so i got a i i got a uh, delta y of let's take a look Oops, delta y what did i say there it is i got a delta y here's the values but I got a delta y of this is from I think third hour. I got a delta y of twenty nine point eight five centimeters. But we got to be in mks. We have to be in meters kilogram seconds because I want to compare it to nine point eight one, which is meters per second squared. So it's twenty nine point eight five centimeters. The same thing as point nine eight point two nine eight five. Now maybe. I'm being a little optimistic on my eyesight and seeing the difference between little tiny millimeters on the meter stick or on the, it's one, it was a ruler like this. So I'm looking at these little tiny, tiny ticks right here. And, uh, you know, so that's, so that gave me four Siggies. That, trust me, that five is an iffy. Um, so we still have four Siggies on the Delta Y. The time has four Siggies. We should get four Siggies on G. Now this is what the, so, that, so then when we actually did it and we let the ball go up here, it took, and then between this first photo gate and the second photo gate, it took, according to this, 0.2358 seconds. And that's, that's legit. You don't have to do it again and again and again because the daggone timer, you know, it doesn't lie. So you assume its tolerances are correct. You assume it's calibrated and all. Um, so with these numbers, then we we set out to find G. So now you, uh, instead of just sitting there staring at me, get your paper out and uh, use this formula. G equals negative two delta y over t squared. And del oh, that delta y is negative. It, it's falling down. So use this formula, plug this in for delta y, plug this in for t, and then uh, either type into the chat or tell me what is our g we got for the room. And third hour, by the way, was my best hour as far as my best data that I've gotten so far. Anybody got an answer yet? Okay, so nobody? Um, I got negative 3.4352. Where the do you square the time? Uh, let me try again. Yeah, check that square that time. So you should have negative two. You should have negative two times negative 0.2985 meters. Divide that by 0.2358 seconds squared. And that's third hour was wrong. What do you get? Let's see if you verify. I got 0 0.334. Really? I got 10.7. There you go. That's better. That's better. Thank you. Should be 10.7. 
uh, check your parentheses or whatever. 10 point, this is what we got verification in third hour it was 10.7, two, two students who I trust verified it's 10.7. So you should get 10.7 on that. Uh, meters per second squared. Well, in reality, and you can keep checking it to, to prove it to yourself, but uh, in reality, it's 9.81. So now when we do, this is the official G, and so now we do the old, you know, percent error. So now we, this is reasonable at least, we have 10.7. Uh, we don't need units if we're doing percent error because all it's ratio. 10.7 minus 9.81 divided by 9.81, all that times 100. And save yourself some time. We got 9.5%. So we got a, in class, we got a 9.5% error. Um, oh, 9.5% error. Um, now, what I told third hour, and I told every hour this, but I was more specific in third hour. I said, man, that's pretty good. I mean, that's, that's good enough for high school work. It still makes me think that maybe I wasted a bunch of money if I spent that much money on this. Because uh, for that kind of money, I should be getting less than 5% error. Um, and supposedly I had four SIGIs. So I think the part of the problem was um, assuming making the assumption that V-naught was zero when in fact it wasn't. So there's another way to do this. I'll give you a hint. Nobody is involving the third orange. And uh, it's a smarter way to do it. Um, except that we don't really want that because that is, that is, then we don't take advantage of the time. Oh, no, 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 no. You still do. You still do. Yeah. Um, yeah, you still take advantage. It's a, it's in this this situation we use a third and the second uh, to get better data. And so a guy named uh, Tim Corbley. Tim Corbley. Uh, this is about four five years ago. Tim Corbley uh, took it upon himself because I I made this blanket statement. If anybody can get that G to 9.81 or 9.82 using this equipment, because I was trying to justify still on money, then I will give not only, I'll give this, I'll give that person 25 points and I'll give everybody in class 10 points. And so Tim uh, was a quiet, unassuming fellow um, and he took it upon himself. He sat back there for a good week, literally. He, he probably still has the data and he worked, he tried every, he was very methodical. And by the way, he's an engineering physics. He's majored in engineering physics, uh, one of the hardest majors at OU, and did well. And now he works with robotics, and he wants to eventually teach physics. So maybe he'll take over when I retire. Anyway, so Tim Corbley, he got it down. He he got nine point eight two, but he had to keep adjusting the height and to keep adjusting how he's. There's different ways of doing that timer until, like like a scientist, until he got it. And then, he, and then the thing is, he had to prove it, and he proved it to me. And so I had to give up all those points. But that's okay. I was excited. I should have taken I probably did. I just don't have them. I don't remember where they are. I took pictures of his notes, I'm sure, uh, all that work he did. So I offered the same thing to this year's kids. If they can get it between 8 and 9%, we got 9.5, the best I could do today, in the quickly throwing it together. If they can work at lunch or if you guys come after school or at lunch or, uh, you know, when no one's around, maybe uh, eight to 9%, I'll give you 15 points. If you get it between five and, and 8%, some point 9%, I'll give you 20 points bonus. And if you get it less than 5%, I'll give you 25 points and I'll give everybody else in the, the class. I guess if you're virtual, every other virtual kid, you'll be the hero of the virtual kid. I'll give them all 10 points bonus each too. Okay. So you're playing for your class here. You're like the hero. All right. So that's the end of that thing. Um, not as successful as I was hoping I was going to be today, but I'm, I'm happy that we ended on a good note, less than 10% error. Uh, okay. So the next thing is the dollar bill. 
So if you go to the back of the sheet, this part here, um, we spent the rest of the time filling in this table. But first, uh, we were playing with this dollar bill, so or a five dollar bill. So if you take this, this, I used to be a bartender, and this is a good way to double your tips, because <laughs> you get people that that uh, you know, I was a bartender back in eighty five, eighty five, eighty six, when I was uh, in grad school for to be a teacher. <laughs> anyway, I worked my way. I was in Kelly's on Main Street, but. Uh, so you have your tips out there and then somebody that gives you a dollar tip, which was a good tip back then. They give you a dollar tip and say, Hey, I'll go double or nothing on that tip on you. So I go, okay, let's play this little game. And so you, if you hold a bill up here and you put your fingers like a C, make your fingers like a C and you put them right at the face. So if it's a $1 bill, it's right at, you know, George Washington or Abe Lincoln, or you know, if this were Norman North, I'd be saying, uh, Ben Franklin. <laughs> Oh, it's an old, that's a Norman North shape. Okay. So if you put your uh, fingers right there and then you let it go, well, any moron can catch that, right? That's not hard to do unless you're schizophrenic or something. So you know you're going to drop it and then you know you're going to catch it. Okay. So, um, but the, the trick is for somebody else to hold the dollar bill and then for you to put your finger there and then they don't know when you're going to let it go. And so I would hold it there. They'd put their finger there. And of course, this, they already had a couple of, uh, you know, martinis or something. Yeah, well, set them up. And so sure enough, man, every time it would go, whoa, uh, <laughs> it'd be a pretty good sobriety test, I'm telling you. So um, it, you're, because your human reaction time is so slow. You're, we really are slow. The nerves that we, we think we're, we think we're a fast reactor. We're not. Humans are really slow at reacting to things. Uh, if we, like I say, we're 30 foot tall, it would, you'd, you'd hit your toe and then about three or four seconds later, you go, ouch. So um, you see it. Uh, and, and it's and it, the person <laughs> had one kid, three, two, oh, no, no, don't say three, two, one. <laughs> You're not supposed to let them know, okay? It's a surprise. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So then a lot of kids, were, we did it today in class and they were missing them, you know? They just, they were like shocked. They couldn't believe they were, they were missing them. And you ought, so have, have somebody at home try it on you uh, and just see, um, try it, try me. How, how many can you do out of five? Well, so we've always done this and I've kind of said, see how slow you are. That's why we're having error. Well, then a couple of years ago, I decided to quantify that. And that's what this does. So I set this, I, I come up with this little, little uh, activity. And um, I dragged Jamie up there, my wife, and I made her hold the stick. So this is, a, this is meter sticks. Now you probably don't have a meter stick at home, but you can do it with this too. Uh, and once again, you need somebody else to help you with this one. Uh, I could be whoever, uh, just somebody to drop it. So they don't know when you, when they're going to drop it. And you want the person that's dropping it needs to be a little clever about it. Don't just kind of be predictable because usually people catch it because they're predicting those dollar bill things. It's because you anticipate the drop and that's why you end up catching it really fast. It's not because, you know, anyway, it's like when you trip and fall, you think, well, but you don't boom, you, and that's what makes me think that I, that I think is the source of error because you watch how fast that dollar bill falls instantaneously. Uh, it's not like it's a real slow roll, ball rolling down a hill. So I think we had error baked into the process. It was a flawed experiment, but that's okay because I want to give you a chance to beat it, okay? With a, with a smarter experiment. There are, and I, Tim was doing much more experiments. Anyway, so she would hold it here. Uh, you can see her arm there. She would hold it here. And then I told her, don't tell me. And I, I put my hand on the table so, I, so my arm, my hand wouldn't move up and down while I'm trying to, you know, catch it. So I could, and then you put your hand at the, now, there I wasn't, but now we, we have the students put their hand at the 50 centimeter mark so that 
so the stick is balanced, all right? So it's not gonna start to rotate on you. So you just drop it. And then you, uh, so say I say it's sitting at the 50 centimeter mark to begin with, the yellow, 50 centimeter mark to begin with. And then by the time I finally catch it, it's at the 70 centimeter mark. So then you, over here, you fill the table in. And so you, so we're always starting at the 50. So I can put 50 right there for all those. And then let's say the first time you do it, uh, you catch it at the 70 centimeters, then you catch it at the 60, then you catch it at the 80, then you catch it at the 85, you know. So let's say, let's say ultimately you end up with, uh, I don't know, 20 centimeters for your, uh, and I said the median just because you don't need a calculator that way. It's good to do five trials, take the middle trial, right? That's a, that's a cheap man's average. A median is a cheap man's average. Um, and then, so your so so your final oh, sorry your final mark would say it's seventy. So you end up being twenty centimeters would be your your median uh, for your delta y would be the median delta. Let's say it's your delta y. Okay. So then, what we're going to do is let's just say that's the case, and and I'll let you. So we had all them. All they come up with their own numbers. Some were bigger. Some were smaller. Uh, and then we we use the equations to determine what your reaction time was. So once again, we're gonna use the second, I'll go ahead and call it second blue. So delta Y equals V naught YT minus one half GT squared, more preview of Monday or Tuesday of next week. Uh, v naught, we didn't throw the, we didn't throw it up in the air, we didn't throw it down. So V naught is zero. And so we're trying to solve for T and so I multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by G, and T then is equal to negative two delta Y over, uh, oh, G, but then square root. Someone said, whoa, square root, you can't square root the negative number. But remember, delta Y, I should have shown that, delta Y is down below, it's falling, so delta Y is negative. So that it, so you almost have to have that negative there to make it work, right? You have to have, that has to be a negative because delta Y is negative. G itself we know is positive. So this time we're using the, the actual G. So let's take this, let's say it's 20 centimeters, okay? Just to throw a number at it, kind of made it up, but let's say it's 20 centimeters. So we're gonna stay in MKS, so that's 0.2 meters. So we're getting close to being done, I promise. T then equals the square root of negative two times um, delta y, which is negative 0 0.20 meters, divided by g, which is 9.81. Actually in the room, it's 9.82. Uh, Surgeon would say that since it's occurring in my room. And we know that because we spent, 50, we had a $50,000 instrument that did it. We didn't spend that much. We just borrowed it from OU. Actually, actually an OU professor did it twice. So he's a geophysicist, so he knows what he's doing, uh, Dr. Witten. Okay, so um, why is this working? Oh, okay, so plug those numbers in, tell me what you get. Maybe I will too. You plug them in, I plug them in, let's see. So square root, Parentheses. Okay. Two times two divided by nine point eight two equals point two oh. That's weird. It's kind of weird at both point two point two. I didn't mean for that to happen. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. Okay, so that means that my reaction time, let's get rid of that. My reaction time, if this were the, I made this number up, this is about me though. My reaction time is plus or minus 0 0.20. I didn't see the rest of the number. This two sig is the best we can hope for here. 0 0.20 seconds. Now, that's for, and that is about me. 
Uh, it's a, I'm about 20, 20 centimeters by the time I finally catch it. And so I'm a 60, 61 year old. So that's for a 61 year old. You being young high school kids, most high school kids are somewhere around a reaction time of 0 0.18, 0 0.17. Uh, if you are, if your reaction time is less than 0.15, you're probably some kind of athlete. Uh, if you're, if you're, I've had kids reaction time they show me about 0.12. Uh, you're probably like a baseball player, somebody who uh, I played baseball through high school. Uh, actually, I finally I, I stopped after my junior year because I was just I rode the bench all the time because. I didn't when I was younger. I was thought I was hot shot, but uh, I couldn't hit a fastball and I hardly could hit a curveball because I, my reaction time is so slow. I spent forever in batting cages. And I, I was a good fielder, but I could not. I, my batting average was horrible, so I was on the bench. So I probably I wasn't in this. I wish I could have checked myself. I might have saved myself a lot of problems. <laughs> if your reaction time is pretty slow. I mean, you, maybe you're good at other things, but I don't know if uh, baseball is your sport. Uh, tennis may be tough on you. Ping pong might be tough on you. Um, I'm a pretty good ping pong player, though. Anyway, so 0.12 is really good. Uh, if you are a typical teenager, you're probably sitting there with a reaction time of around approximately 0.17. Uh, plus or minus 0.17 seconds. It's good to know these kind of things. All right. So that's where we ended it. Um, and we're still, we're going somewhere with this. We're not done yet, but we're going to use this to explain why our data was so awful on us with phones. And then theoretically the, the, and it was better. I mean, the, the photo gates was better data in every class, but I mean, it should have been a lot better data. And I think that's a flawed experiment, but uh, we'll, I'll try it again Monday, a different way and see if that makes it better. Um, yeah. So that's about where the bell, well, the, their watches went off. Cause that's the, we got six minutes before the bell. We always play flashback on Friday. So we had a bit of a, you know, a little six minutes shorter an hour on Friday. Okay. So that's enough for it on a Friday. You guys, we're sitting at 451 here. So let me turn this off. Uh, has anybody got a question? Oh, so what's to do this weekend? Take home test. Remember, take home test. There's really no, there's nothing to submit this weekend. You're not going to, you are going to submit the take home test, but that's Monday night. Oh, here's a big thing. Sunday night. Remember, Sunday night. Tie a string around your finger. Sunday night. Uh, put an alarm on your phone. At 9 to 10, we're doing our Zoom, and that is exclusively for the take-home test. Okay, we're not talking about anything else. Take-home test, 2B. Uh, we're going to go through and work every problem. Well, no, we're not going to work. We're not saying, uh, I'm not going to work every problem. I'm going to answer all your questions in order, all right? Uh, and I did, I think it's, we, first time we did, we skipped around, and out of, so it wasn't, chronological and it really messed up people that went back and watched the recording because they just want to look at number five and you got to sit and watch the whole stupid thing and then you're going to get to five so instead i'm going to get okay now questions on one now questions on two now questions on three but i'm not just going to sit there and work it for you okay you if you don't ask questions we move on so you need to at least to try it so you have a specific question not okay can you work the problem it's like, why? What, what is your miss? What is your question about that problem? If you do, then I'll, then I'll kind of get started. I'll get to, I'll start you on all the problems that you want to. And it goes about an hour. It might go a little less, it might go a little long, but it's quite a few questions. So some of them are choice. I'm not going to help you a whole lot with those. I will now, now eventually though, you'll have a video key, which is posted Tuesday night. Tuesday afternoon. And then you can definitely got to watch that video key to make sure you're doing it right. You turn, you submit something Monday night that says, hey, I tried all these problems, but then Tuesday you check it to see if you're right before the test. I don't want you saying the wrong thing. 
Okay, so that's this weekend. Fun, fun. Oh, uh, you'll be the first to know. Oh, and also Hall of Fame. I uh, forgot about that. Um, I said I would announce the Hall of Fame today, so I will, but it'll be late tonight or possibly early in the morning. Um, I need to look over that, some tests and see. It's not really hard to pick the, uh, the Hall of Fame for uh, first semester because it's just by brilliance of mind. So it's pretty objective. Second semester is hard because that I got to think of the whole student, you know, uh, man, you know, you, you all would be candidates. I mean, we got some all stars here. So you're always there on Zoom. You know, there are things you can do as a virtual kid. Even though you're not in class, you're still participating. You're still helping everybody else. You know, so the, I'm asking, to, you know, Sophia and you all, you're on Facebook a lot. You're helping there. You're asking questions. You're on this all the time. You're reliable. So, yeah, so um, you all was, are certainly up for, but for the first one, it's mostly just uh, all objective and who did well on the, these are the in-class tests or that test. So I'm looking at test one. I'm looking at take-home test. No, no, not take-home test. Test 2A. Is that it? Is that the only two in-class? The only two really in-class tests we've had was take home test and test 2A. So it's only based off of um, most of, and maybe I'll throw a little in take home test in there or something just to sweeten the deal, but maybe I'll throw in the quizzes, okay? Maybe I'll throw those in or something like that. Uh, but it's mostly based on test one and test 2A. And so that'll be posted in the Facebook group and I'll post it on the uh, canvas either late night tonight, I gotta cook dinner and um which means that who knows what happens when i cook the dinner <laughs> that's a big party so um and then my wife and i are going to do something so i don't it might be tomorrow but it'll be up by tomorrow 1 p.m 1 p.m uh but it, it really it, it was always important to kids because then you got exempted from the final but now with this new covid rule all a's and b's are exempt oh and the, one last thing here's some good news uh, Richard um, Cavett, who's a faculty member, he's a great, great, great history teacher at Norman High, he um, made a statement today uh, to the faculty that he's going to give every kid, uh, because of this whole COVID and this, all this crap you guys are going through, 100 points. And just because, because, you know, thanks for hanging in there all semester. I got to think about that. I said, well, I'll give a hundred points. It's a lot of bonus. Um, I don't have as many points as he does. So I'm going to give instead though, I will give sometime this weekend. I'll give, a, I'll give everybody that is active, which is all of you. And uh, pretty much everybody, except there's about two or three kids that just never do anything, never show up. Uh, you know, come on, man. Maybe they need it more than anybody, but um, you gotta do something. Anyway, um, I'm going to give them all 100 out of 100. So you'll have it's kind of like we did a cushion. The cushion's coming back. So if you're sitting at a 78.8, that might be enough to get you to the B range. You go, yay, I'm going to take the final. Okay. Uh, I'm still debating on this final thing, this last 100, 100 point thing. I've minimized the, F, the, the importance of it down to 100 points. Uh, it was 300 and it was a 150. Now it's a hundred. So it's already lost. It's kind of, it's bang. Um, I haven't even written the daggone thing. There's not a take home test for it. It covers test one and test two a, and that's it. Um, so it's old stuff and the students that are taking it are struggling anyway. So it's like, God, what are you gonna do? Torture them. So no, it'll be a, pretty easy, I think, very doable test. It may be the easiest test I've written in my life, this final, so that I can give them a boost rather than hurt them even further. You know what I'm saying? Give them a chance to get that B or whatever. So all those are things I'll think about this weekend. Any other questions? Was I recording that? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's real now. I recorded it. 
Can't go back on it. It's recorded. You got me. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I will put this recording up later. And uh, video evidence, Jacob says, that is true. <laughs> of course, now these days you have video evidence. They still deny it. <laughs> That's not what I meant. All right. See you guys at once. I'll see you Monday. We got two more sessions. Just two more sessions. Well, we got the Sunday night thing. So hopefully I'll see you Sunday night. All right. Bye-bye.